The Circuit Mono Station is Novation's new analog synth. It takes the best of Novation's popular Base Station 2 sound, makes it paraphonic, and adds to it the intuitive and easy to use sequencer of the Circuit Groove Box. The combination comes out to be something that I think is larger than the sum of its parts. A couple of housekeeping notes. Number one, there's way more depth to this machine than what I can cover in a basic review. So hit subscribe um, and comment if you have any questions and I'll cover that in further videos. And number two, check this out. So that fills an example of how the circuit sequencer can automate almost all the knobs and sliders of the mono station instantaneously. So keep that in mind as I go over the different features and oscillators and knobs and so on, that everything you see, not just the notes, can be sequenced using the sequencer. So let's get started. Let's start by taking an empty session. It starts with a default patch, so I'll clear it. And signal flow starts with a clean saw wave. You've got a range of 11 octaves. You might notice right away that all the controls associated specifically with oscillator one are colored purple. You have additional octave control here. Course tuning goes one octave up, and one octave down. Fine tuning goes a semitone up or down. You've got four wave shapes, sine, triangle, saw, pulse, which has variable pulse width control using shift and the fine tuning knob. And you can modulate this either manually uh, through a sequence or using the mod matrix. Using the mixer, I can bring in the volume of oscillator two and I'll switch on paraphonic mode two so it will trigger the envelope too. And here in dual mode, I've got green oscillator two on the bottom, purple oscillator one on top. Now there's no point in having two oscillators configured the same way, but with a slight detune of one of the oscillators, the synth fun starts. Now paraphonic or duophonic mode means that you can play each of the oscillators separately. It's called paraphonic or duophonic and not polyphonic, because they share the same amplitude envelope and filter with the exception of bypassing the filter, which I'll show you in a bit. Beside the two main oscillators, you can bring in a sub oscillator, which is a triangle wave tied into oscillator one. This adds really nice depth, both in high frequencies and low ones. There's also a noise oscillator, which you can control the volume of and uh, modulate this as well. There's also ring modulation, which you can bring in very nicely. Ring modulation is a multiplication of oscillator one and oscillator two. And you can see it produces this nice effect when they're detuned. Um, and when they're further apart, also brings in a rough, nice, distortion. I'll clean things up a bit and talk about audio in. Audio in lets you apply uh, the filter and other modulation effects to external audio synths, devices, and so on. And what I did here is connect the line out to the audio in, which allows me to create a really nice feedback loop. So as long as you're not using external devices, always keep a cable there. Uh, and you can have some nice, unexpected results with feedback. Let's move on to the filter section. There's pre-filter overdrive. The filter has three modes, bandpass, highpass, lowpass. I'd say it sounds nice, but you can probably hear it for yourself. Resonance is an emphasis at the cutoff point. Self oscillates if you go all the way up. Band pass resonates as well. And high pass. You've got slope control. This is what a 12 dB per octave slope sounds like. Now, a really nice trick the mono station has up its sleeve is filter bypass. So you can see here, oscillator number two isn't being filtered at all. As I move the cutoff point, only oscillator one is affected. And you can 
bypass, the filter with the noise oscillator as well. You can choose to have either one bypass the filter or both using the bypass toggle. Finally, you've got uh, two types of post-filter distortion. And with a toggle, you can choose either one or apply both. And of course, you can affect the depth of it. So that's how you create sounds with a mono station. Now let's talk about modulation. We'll start with the easy part, amplitude envelope. You've got your standard attack decay, sustain, release sliders. And remember what I said before, each of these sliders, like the knobs, can be automated or parameter locked. Uh, and I'll show you how when we get to that section later. Beside the envelope, you have uh, an LFO with a knob to control the rate. Now, since we started with a clean patch, there's no effect for the LFO until we route it in the mod matrix. LFO is one of the four modulation sources. We'll apply it to amplitude which creates tremolo. You can route every modulation source to one of eight destinations in the mod matrix. LFO has four waveforms. We saw triangle, sawtooth, square, and sample and hold, which is basically random levels. Now I mentioned eight mod matrix destinations. Uh, if you look at the top right, you'll see only six buttons, but when I change the oscillator from one to two, Notice the purple changing to green, signifying that they will now affect oscillator 2 as a destination. Let me give you another example of using the mod matrix, uh, this time for the envelope. So envelope by default is routed to the amplitude, but you can actually disconnect this connection by turning the knob. And now even though the sliders are set, there's no effect on amplitude. Instead, I'll pick pitch as a destination. And now the pitch of the oscillator is modified by the sliders on the envelope. I'll clear that. Let's see how the envelope can affect the filter. The mod depth knob controls the extent to which the envelope affects the filter. Let's make the attack quicker. Add some decay. Make that quicker. And that's how we apply envelope modulation to filter. You can also do this negatively. So start from a high point and have the attack drive the filter low and the decay drive the filter back up. Remember, if you're driving the filter cutoff point higher, you need to have the filter start at a low point, otherwise you won't hear the envelope modulation. Let me give you another classic uh, LFO modulation. Vibrato will affect pitch. The depth knob will control the depth or extent of vibrato. Of course, the rate, you can go crazy high. This makes a FM modulation type sounds or go back low for a slightly more subtle vibrato. So that pretty much covers envelopes and LFOs as modulation sources, but there are two more sources in the mod matrix. The first is velocity. What velocity does is let you take the force with which you um, hit the pads, and the pads are velocity sensitive, and apply it to one of the eight modulation destinations. Let's look at pitch, because that's the one that's most easiest to hear. So if I hit the pads hard, pitch will be high. If I hit it softly, pitch will be low. I'll clear that and click the filter button to route velocity to the filter cutoff point. And this makes playing music a bit more expressive. You can also apply negative modulation. So if I take the mod depth knob and turn it counterclockwise, it sounds completely different. And again, impacted by how hard I hit the pads. In terms of connectivity, you've got uh, in the back line out and audio in. We talked about that before. MIDI in, out, and through. Um, clock out and in for sync with uh, 
Volcas and other devices that support that, and CV note outs, uh, both pitch and gate, as well as auxiliary CV, which is a modulation destination, one of the eight destinations in the mod matrix. USB is used for sending and receiving MIDI data, as well as synchronizing with Novation's components software. So I want to talk about what I think are the main standout features of the mono station. Number one, and this may sound silly, is its preset patches and LEDs. Right, so the fact that it has presets is not a given for an analog synth. There are many that don't. And the second thing is the LEDs. You can see that every time I change a patch, the LEDs change to reflect the settings of each of the knobs and the sliders in that patch. And I think that's huge. With over 50 parameters that you can change in the mod matrix and the knobs and the sliders, it's a real treat to be able to come up with a sound and just save it. And once you recall it, immediately understand what's going on. The second standout feature of the mono station is the fact that it's paraphonic. And the cherry on top is that they've added glide, which you can assign different levels of to each of the different oscillators. So here I've got a really long glide on oscillator one and none at all on oscillator two. Adding to that the really neat filter bypass that I talked about before on oscillator two means I can get an unaffected sound on oscillator two and have a filtered oscillator one. And that's pretty close to polyphonic and I think a really nice sound that you can get out of the mono station. The next standout feature is the sequencer. I'll hit pattern settings, which lets me shorten the sequence. So now it's only eight steps. Make it go back to front or ping pong or random. Let's set it back to normal. And using the shift button, I can set a different start point. So here I sequenced oscillator one. I can go up to 16 patterns of 16 steps, a total of 256 steps for oscillator one. I can also sequence oscillator two separately. You can only do eight bars of 16 um, steps on oscillator two. Let me bring up the volume of oscillator two. So now they're playing together. A few more neat tricks um, of the sequencer. You can transpose octaves up and down using the shift octave button. This is a very useful feature. Uh, it's really nice to try sounds of different octaves. The sequences aren't in sync, by the way, because of the changes I did before. Let me start and stop. See, once you change the length of, um, of one of the sequences, like this, say by changing the start point, they get out of sync. So if you want things back in order, just hit the play button. The shift pattern settings button will mutate a, se a sequence permanently. So now it just became randomized. You can hear it independently on oscillator two. Let's bring back oscillator one. Okay, let's talk about scales. You can set the keyboard to work chromatically, but if you want to stick to scales, you've got 16 to choose from. You can see the chromatic notes in every scale on top as I change them. And you can also transpose the sequences if you like by hitting any one of the notes on the top two rows. If I go back to pattern settings, one of the really cool features in the mono station sequencer is the ability to change the relative tempo of each of the sequences. So the top eight pads on the uh, pattern settings view represent a multiplication factor of the original tempo of the sequence, including triplets. I'll shorten the length of the sequence to make this a bit more noticeable. And you can go slower up to a quarter of the speed of the main tempo including triplets in between, and up to double the speed of the original tempo. A 
Another way to mess with the relative timing of notes is swing. Let me uh, create a simple pattern. I'll transpose the pattern and shorten it in pattern settings. Okay. So basic swing takes every other note and moves it either forward or backward in time relative to where it's supposed to be. Now if you hit swing sync, what that does is open up a new view where every one of the eight pads on top sets a different swing sync rate. So if your sequences are boring you, hit swing sync rate and you never know. The third sequencer track in the mono station is the mod sequencer. To show this, I'll create a one bar sequence that has one note. And we'll be modulating the pulse width of a square wave or pulse wave. I'll hit the mod sequence button. And basically I enter a new track where I can set levels from one to 16. Now I only want two steps, so I'll go into pattern settings and shorten the sequence to two steps. Now I basically have a two step mod sequence, which alternates between 1 and 16, between the lowest level and the highest level. I chose sequencer as mod source and pulse width modulation as destination. Now I lowered the LFO, so what we've done now is effectively create a second LFO, a square wave LFO, using the mod sequence. Now using shift mod sequence, I can smoothen the transition between the low and high point and effectively create a triangle LFO. If I wanted more complex wave shapes, I could make the sequence longer. Now it's eight steps. And create additional modulation steps along the way, like this. So while the mono station doesn't have a second LFO, this is a nice way to create another one uh, with new shapes that the first one doesn't even have. Let's route it to pitch, just for fun. We can really map this to, um, to any, uh, any other of the destinations, for example, uh, the filter works really nicely. So you can use mod sequence to go along your sequences, or what I think is better is to use it as an LFO, because if you want to modulate parameters along the sequence, let me create one and show you, you can do that without using the mod sequence track. Just hit record while the sequence is playing and twist the knob. Now the amazing thing is that all across your track you can modulate 17 knob parameters, the four sliders, and 32 mod matrix depth amounts. Not to mention glide, which you can automate on a per step basis. Velocity, which we talked about before. So I think that's 55 total if I counted correctly in addition to the three sequencers, oscillator one, oscillator two, and mod sequence. Now I could go on, but there's one more interesting thing that I wanted to talk about, and that's parameter locks. So I just showed you how to automate parameters as the sequence is playing. But you can actually do something more interesting, which is go step by step, and change each and every one of the parameters per that specific step. So I've created a simple one note sequence. I stop it and hit record. Now in this mode, I can hold a note and then change any parameter I want for that specific note. So I just increase the volume of the noise oscillator for a step, I'll do it again, increase it here, and immediately on the next step, decrease it. Do it again, increase, decrease and the result is the beginning of a percussive sound similar to what you may have heard in the beginning of this clip. Now I'm going to go to town on this and just go ahead and change a lot of parameters on a per step basis basically just to make a light show there's no musical uh, rhyme or reason here though it may come out nice. This is the filter and resonance changing in the beginning of uh, 
of this one bar sequence on a per step basis. Let's do it for uh, the sliders. Again, the only purpose here is to make a light show and to show you that uh, these sliders can also be sequenced on a per step basis. And this is what it sounds and looks like. So I think if you, if you get what I'm trying to show you here is that basically, you, since all the synth parameters are modulatable on a per step basis, you can basically create a different synth sound for every single step, which I think is pretty darn cool. So that concludes my review of the Novation Circuit Mono Station. If you have any questions, write them in the comments below. If you like this video, hit like. If you want to see more, hit subscribe. Thanks for watching.